Hi, everyone. Welcome to the latest episode of Vox Vomitus. I am your host, Jennifer Ann Gordon, the author of the gothic horror novels Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent, and From Daylight to Madness. As always, I am joined by my two Vox Vomitus vixens, Alison Martin, author of The Bourbon Books, Dibs, and Since September, and Trisha Ridinger McGee, the author of the Beyond series, including Beyond the Surface and the very recently released Beyond the Dreams. Today, we are really excited because we have one of my favorite authors with us today, uh, Miss Wendy Webb, the queen of Great Lakes Gothic fiction herself. Hi, everybody. Here with us. <laughs> Here's that. Give her a hand. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. You know, you got to love uh, an author who just comes on and goes, hi, everybody, and like <laughs> brings up the glass of wine. Wendy, you're at home here. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for so, having me. Um, for those people who are, <laughs> the people that are listening and watching um, who don't know you and don't know your work, tell us a little bit about yourself and your work. Well, um, I am, I live in Minnesota. Um and I write about, um, I, I set my books on the Great Lakes. And I like gothic fiction, so I write gothic, scary, spooky stories. And I just set them in a place that I know because basically I'm the lazy writer. I don't like to do, <laughs> I don't like to do a lot of research. I just want to write about the place that I know. And apparently I invented a genre, which is northern gothic. And um, I think that's wow. cool. You have so, your own yes. I, Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. I love the idea. Well, this is my genre now, so I'm in charge. Of it. <laughs> it's my genre now, people. <laughs> and so um, and my um, sixth book is coming out in, um, in a uh, little over a month. So I'm excited about that. But as I was telling the ladies earlier, really nervous. This is the time that authors tend to just lay moaning in a ball, hoping that people will like their work. So, Check out. <laughs> <laughs> and then really obsessing about like you know release day when you're like, yeah. is it selling? Is anyone buying it? What if they hate it? What? <laughs> and you know, and it's fine. Yes. Some people will always uh, hate something, but. It is very nerve wracking. And this is this will be your sixth book, correct? It will, yeah. And um, my last and book, Out of the Lake, did pretty well. Um, and I, on the release day, I just sat and just refreshed my sales numbers. I did nothing but, oh my God. <laughs> People we are buying it. People are buying it. So if anybody like wonders what authors do on their release date, that's what we do. <laughs> that's it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it is. Uh, so my the, my latest book came out on my birthday, and it was oh. my birthday and my book release day, and I spent the whole morning just refreshing and panicking. And then of course, uh, my fiance is like, let's go someplace because it's your birthday. And, I, and then I was just like on my phone, like there's no internet service out here in the sunflower field. That's How will I know? From you and says, this this has got to go. No more, it's your birthday. The numbers will be there when you come back. <laughs> and that is what happened. Like my phone died. And the second we got home, I like ran to the computer and was like, refresh. <laughs> But so, you know, it's yeah. not about the sales, it's about the art. So <laughs> it is. No, it's about both. <laughs> it's, about, it's about both. It, you know, it really is. It's, you know, I spend six months by myself just staring at my computer, making stuff up in my own head. And, um, and then the other six months going out there and talking to people and doing stuff like this. And it's just fun. Do you With ever find yourself six oh. months people? See, yeah. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself as you're writing, like during the writing process, thinking, this is it, I'm a genius. And then oh, the next every paragraph word. thinking, <laughs> I do I even know how to write a sentence because <laughs> like, I go back and forth between nothing has been written like this and <laughs> and this is word vomit like paragraph yeah. second paragraph I'm like I'm just 
vomiting out words. <laughs> Well, I find myself using the same descriptors over and over, and I think they're awesome. Um, but the 20th time, you know, they might not be that awesome. And my editors will say to me, Wendy, um, you have people smiling a lot. They smile at each other, and then they smile at each other, and they're smiling again. Maybe you can kind of find something else, maybe plumb the depths of your creativity to figure out something else to say. <laughs> okay. Um, so I love this, that you have like kind of favorite descriptors. Do you have um, like a favorite spooky descriptor that you like to use? Oh God, chills are always going up people's spines, winding their way around, you know, and I, <laughs> whenever I, I try to lapse into that, I try to say, okay, there are other ways to describe being afraid. And so I gotta, I gotta figure that out all the time. Do you keep like a list somewhere to say how often you've used a certain thing or do you limit yourself per book? Like, well, I didn't use it in this book. Am I allowed to do it again? Like, I really like yeah. or and I'm like, can I do it once per book or can I never do it again? Like one time and then I'm cut off because people will remember, what is she doing with this reference? That's enough with the cat. Well, what I should do is have my copy editors keep a running tally. And but. It, my first or second book, my agent came to me and said, let me guess, you like Chardonnay, you take baths a lot, and you wear cardigans all the time. Like, <laughs> Not oh, you know that? And it's like, oh, my characters are always doing that. Let me just go take a bath and then put a cardigan on. That's the wine. Well, I'm people. pouring some wine. <laughs> Mine just eat all the time, so. Mm. <laughs> And in some books, mine don't even eat. It's like, wait, there's lunchtime someplace. You know, <laughs> book and there was chicken soup. I remember chicken soup and there was chicken and potatoes. I make notes of the food. So I appreciated you referenced it. Even in a very haunted house, they still have to eat, you know? <laughs> you know what? There, there's a series of books um, that is nothing like mine, the Irish Country Doctor series. It's about nothing. It's about a doctor who practices in rural Ireland and really nothing happens except for a few townspeople who come in and, but there's always food and I love it. I'm always <laughs> like, Oh, I want to. And then there's recipes in the back of the books. And so I, I, I with a novel, yeah. like, instead of porn, what plot it's cookbook. What plot? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. So, Wendy, are you wearing a cardigan now? I'm not, I, but I am wearing a shirt for the first time in probably six months that I also wouldn't wear to bed. It's like, oh, I, <laughs> I, I can dress up and put jewelry on for you people. And it's like, yeah. oh, it's all new. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's a really cute necklace. And, oh, I got earrings to wear. I've been at home <laughs> everybody in the world. And... You know, I roll out of bed. Maybe I'll put on a different shirt. Maybe not, though. And that's really how it's been going for the past. Are you wearing month. shoes? I am not wearing shoes at the moment. Me neither. And I, you know, I, I, I haven't worn like nice shoes. I don't have any high heels. I don't do that business. But I've got some nice shoes. I haven't worn them in six months. I don't know if they still fit. It's a crap shoot whether I'll wear shoes or my slippers when I take my dog around the block. So I'm now the crazy lady <laughs> walking the dog in her pajamas and slippers. I will embrace that. I think I think uh, you would only be the crazy lady if you were doing that with a dog leash in one hand and the glass of wine in the other hand or the bottle um, of wine. Then that it's, might have then happened. It's I'm not sure. I <laughs> neither confirm nor deny. It, that has happened. It's been, it's been a long <laughs> pandemic for all of us. It it's has. been a long pandemic. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're not judging. We're sitting here <laughs> drinking on a, a podcast. Hey, if you can't drink on a podcast, where can you, really? Right? I know. We had a guest last week who was so, or two weeks ago, that was so excited when we said, oh, grab a cocktail. And she went, are you serious? Hold on. And she ran out and came back and she's like, awesome. 
And we were like, like no, that was fast. And she's Sorry. like, you didn't have to tell me twice. <laughs> it's fun. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it is. It, and it's good because we're all writers and we're all pretty isolated at the moment besides like our family mm -hmm. and our pets. Uh, so this is kind of our, our girls night out. Or, it is know, fun. And night I, out. You know, when my book comes out in, you know, um, on November one, I usually go on a big book tour all around the country and I don't know how that's going to work this time. Um, maybe it's going to be a lot of more stuff like this and that's okay. Yeah. Cause I don't have to leave my home. <laughs> But, um, yeah. you know, I, I'm going to miss seeing people, seeing readers and talking to people. Right. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that is tricky because, I mean, the three of us have only released books during quarantine. So <laughs> we're like, we don't I mean, recommend my it. first it's book, not fun. <laughs> my first book came out like a week before the world ended. And oh, I'm like, no. oh, are, are people going to want to read? my very depressing, uh, lonely, gothic, and people did want to read it. So oh, yeah, of course, of course. That's oh, yeah. for these times. It is perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's toss this over to Trisha. Do you have any questions for Wendy? I do. Um, I read that when you were in grade school, you read the book Wrinkle in Time. Yeah. And that's what made you decide you wanted to be an author. I had a similar experience. Um, mine was The Outsiders. But oh, yeah, I read that. Too. Yes. <laughs> what about the book? What about it made you think, wow, this is it? I had never um, read anything with any kind of paranormal twist to it. I've been doing The Little House on the Prairie, which I still mm -hmm. love, you know. Oh, yeah. Grandma read me those books. Um, she also read Little Women to me. And that made me realize that I was an author because apparently it was written about me because I was Joe March. And I, so many authors that I know have said, no, 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 no. I was Joe March. <laughs> really, I, I was. And so... Um, <laughs> She was an author, and so I thought, okay, um, mm -hmm. I guess that's what I am too. But I didn't know what I wanted to write about or, um, you know, anything. And then I read A Wrinkle in Time, and just this whole new world opened up to me with this heroine that was so smart and a girl, and I, uh, I loved it. And it just opened up my whole my whole mind to things that were beyond what we could see with our five senses. So, right. Yeah. I love that. And I won't fight you. You can be Joe Mart because I'm <laughs> Anna Green Day Ables. <laughs> who is, I'm like, so, or else I would fight you. But uh, since I'm Anna Green Gables, who's also a writer and a redhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I went to um, Louisa May Alcott's home um, that's in Concord, Massachusetts. It's now a museum. Mm -hmm. And so we stopped there just quickly before going to the airport, and I was able to get on a tour. And it was me and a group of tourists that didn't speak English. And so we were going through the house, and I was getting all misty. And then we went into her bedroom, and the tour guide said, there's a little desk by the window and the tour guide said, and this is where she wrote little women. I burst into tears like the ugly cry that Oprah talks about. I was like, ah. <laughs> and as a group, the, my, my tour mates just kind of skittered away from me. Like, <laughs> like a little woman. crab woman. And, but the tour guide said, let me guess you're an author. And I said, yeah. Oh. And she said, yeah, we get a lot of that here. We get you people. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Uh, yeah, because to us, it's like a holy pilgrimage. You go there and you're yes. like, thank you. Thank you. And I went to her grave, which is not far away. And it was a shrine. There were books there. There were, you know, notebooks, pencils, pens. 
So it's a shrine for writers, um, oh, wow. which is cool. I love that. I just want uh, to know Allison, do you have any questions? No, I'm just, oh. I'm trying to think what the tour group is doing. She's over there having this emotional catharsis as she sees the desk where it all happened and they're just backing away slowly. Quick. Oh, they were like, as a group, just backing away, like, what is, what is wrong? <laughs> <laughs> were they familiar with her or did they have any idea why they were even there? <laughs> this is an interesting thing. Sure. Yeah, it was funny. Well, that's a good segue because the question, the question I was thinking of, uh, we talked earlier about, I had just finished reading your book, The Vanishing this morning, and it references some historical characters and I won't, no spoilers. It's not like they're main characters in the book, but historical people such as having famous authors in there. How did you approach that? And did you have any kind of fear or trepidation about bringing in real live people into your books? Um, yes. Um, but um, there are historical, and I'm not going to give stuff away, but there are historical accounts of um, uh, the author that I mentioned coming to Minnesota specifically to do paranormal research. And I heard that and I just thought, cool, I've got to work this in. I've got to, I've got to put that in a book someday. Um, so yeah, I felt good about doing it, but um, in other cases, um, I fictionalize stuff like my, my book that's coming out in November and the one before it, Daughters of the Lake, and actually End of Temperance Dare too, is set in my fictionalized version of Bayfield, Wisconsin, which is a lovely little town, but I don't call it Bayfield. And I don't, you know, people who know it will know the landmarks and the different buildings and stuff. But I just kind of chicken out in that because I don't want to offend anybody. There's stuff that happens in my stories that, you know, can get pretty dark. And so I don't want to, I don't know. I get it's I'm chickening out. That's really what it is. <laughs> you don't want to ruffle well, feathers and say, oh, by the way, your yeah. beloved town is haunted or yeah. <laughs> kind of things like that that might just sully the name of their little hamlet. I <laughs> sully, sully the name. I um, guess. Yeah, I get, as somebody who also writes some people here. Um, so I write creepy, creepy things as well. And uh, I have a fictionalized island that is very much based on a real island off the coast of New England. And I have a hotel that's very much based on a hotel. My first book was that. Halcyon yeah. Crane was based on a real yeah. island, fooling no one who, who went there, but I named it something else because it was about a longtime island family that had um some pretty ugly paranormal demonic roots and i didn't want anybody on the island long time allergies to say oh yeah she's writing about the johnsons so, <laughs> <laughs> <Not> the johnsons. <laughs> so i i you know i named it something else but yeah i i i'm worried about offending people and with uh the yeah. fate of mercy yeah. alban i had a um a Lutheran minister is one of the main characters. And my brother, my former brother-in-law is a Lutheran minister. And so I called him and I said, listen, Paul, I'm going to have a hunky minister in my new story. And he said, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> Come on now. But he, he, um, called me through that. And I said, am I going to offend people? Cause this is a paranormal story and he's going to be encountering stuff. And he said, Wendy, I have a boss who I've never seen yet. I talk to every day. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna offend us. And I thought that was pretty cool. So yes. um, I went with that. Everybody needs a very even even a Lutheran pastor sensitivity reader. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of uh, church book clubs picked up that book. And it was like, people, there are demons in here, right? <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure you want me to come? But yeah, they did. I know hunky minister will always at the end of the day trump demons. Like he was a hunky minister. As somebody who has you know, I have a hot priest in one of my books, and I'm like, oh, well, you know? there you go. I know, and I did feel bad. I'm like, oh, he's like hot, but <laughs> tortured and haunted. 
Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> as somebody who was raised Catholic, I was like, as I was typing it going, oh no, uh, something is gonna go wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's fine, it's fiction. <laughs> well, it's listen, you, you Catholics are the demon hunters. That's, you know, it's true. You, you got that. <laughs> That's very true. It's like, so, spare time, um, you know, I do it. <laughs> I know I do that. Uh, so I like that we've brought up demons several times. Uh, and before the show started, Wendy, you talked about how you, you liked to write what scares you. Yeah. So can you tell us um, kind of how, like how you get scared during your writing? And is that how you know it's going well? Have you ever yeah. scared yourself too much and went too yes. dark? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. That we want to hear about. <laughs> <laughs> the first time it happened um, with my first book, um, my main character was walking down an empty street and it was kind of, you know, the wind was blowing and it was empty. And I don't plan anything out with my books. I don't know what's coming. Um, and all of a sudden Ooh. I heard in my head, you know, that song and I apologize cause I'm going to sing a little bit now. So I, I'm sorry if dogs start howling, but um, it, the song, the playmate song say, say, oh playmate come. So I heard that in my head, but in a minor key and I wrote it down. Like that's what she's hearing as she's walking down the street and she's looking around. I got so scared. I had to close my computer hitch up my dog and go outside for a walk. It's like, okay, that's it. Okay. If this is what's happening. And then later in the book, um, there are three children, little triplets who are ghosts and they scared me so much that I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would be scared. Like I'd be looking around and looking around for these oh. little ghosts. And then I would think you made those up. <laughs> You just made them. Up. You don't. Have, it's they're made up. They're not real. <laughs> they're not real. But I do. And in um, in Temperance Dare, um, it it goes pretty pretty dark at the end. Um, and I, you know, I really do have a fear of of demons. And if I don't know if demons are real, I'm I'm not I'm not saying if they're real or if they're not real, but um. There was a demon in that book, Temperance Dare, which is why there had to be the end of Temperance Dare, and um, and that the whole idea of that really scares me. I just bought a new, well, I just bought an old house, but I recently, well, you can see my bookshelves aren't even filled yet, but um, I I want I, I wanted to have like a ghost hunter come in here, and just see if everything was okay because I can. I, I think places can be haunted and um, sometimes it's, you know, Aunt Millie who died and is just floating around and is a nice presence and other times it's not. What do you feel there? You know what? I don't feel anything, but I, I, I sort of feel like now after writing all these books, I just feel like I wouldn't even be scared if, uh, if there was a haunting, I think, get out it's my house um and i don't I, but you know again i don't want to sorry anybody <laughs> <laughs> i don't mean any disrespect. Record, <laughs> yeah if any any creatures or presences are yeah. listening we are not summoning you to our home i do respect you just, um, <laughs> but the other thing is that um my my parents both passed away within the last four years and when I moved in, I have their ashes here. So good luck, anyone trying to trying to do anything, because my mom and dad are here. They were right. a hedge of protection around you right there. Yeah. Yeah. Fight their exactly. way through. That or we and you have a dog. Yeah. Oh, pardon? Did you say about Oh, I said, and you have a dog, but then I heard Allison say hot priest. I was and then just I think something shows up. <laughs> They do their little magic. I, I probably shouldn't call that magic. Well, I, yeah. I do have a dog. Um, I've always had dogs, and my readers know that I put them in my books. 
I've always had Malamutes, but now I have a white German Shepherd, and um, he is on the job. He is he is patrolling the house when we go out. He patrols the yard. He's a he's a good boy. I didn't even know they made so if you had. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a whole like subset of uh, German Shepherd. He came to me as a rescue. Um, yeah, his name is Frosty, which I thought was kind of dorky, but I I just I kept it because he's just the sweetest. Yeah. So I feel um, like if there was a ghost in your house, Frosty would know. Frosty would know, Frosty and would your parents know. would know. Yeah, yeah. So you're probably pretty safe. <laughs> So um, earlier you referenced the fact that you don't plan anything out. So you are a pantser like the rest of us. Yes, we all are. We all are. We all are. We all are. We're always like, oh, gosh, my character just did something crazy. And now I have to write a, <laughs> another book. <laughs> uh, do you find, have you ever written a lot and, and then looked back on it and said, oh, none of this is it's is worth saving or are you able to always kind of uh, salvage well here's the, the thing <laughs> um i just i just write it and then what i do you know i'll try to write maybe you know two thousand words in a sitting maybe a little more and then the next time i take it up again i reread what i've done just to kind of get the flow but I will make that work or die trying because it, it, cutting out anything that I have spent time doing is, it, it's like cutting off my own arm. It's like, no, yes. <laughs> I know I've written myself into a corner, but I will write myself out of that corner. <laughs> and so I don't, I, I never have um, uh, cut out anything. I, I'll just, it, it maybe takes a while, but I will figure out a way to make it work. I love that. Gosh, now I'm re really re regretting cutting that chapter. I had all about spiders in a well for no reason. <laughs> See that? <laughs> See, I'm, I'm writing my next book right now. And just today, before we got on this call, I was thinking that I was going to have a character die. But um, then as I was writing, it's like, no, because of this character dies, it, see, in my books, they're not all like scary and doom and gloom. There's kind of light spots and humor and fun too. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, if this character dies, there's no more fun in the book. And so <laughs> I kind of, so she's not dead. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but um, now <laughs> I have to figure out what's but going it's on. It's a, she, it's a she. She's not dead. And, maybe she lost an arm, but she's a survivor. May, maybe she lost an arm, but um. It, so now I got to figure out what's going on. I feel like I've written myself into a corner by saving this character. In the end, it's going to work out, but it's like, well, okay, now what? So, do you write every day? Um, when I'm on deadline, I do. And with my, my latest couple of books, I've had deadlines. And so, yeah, I do write every day, but when I am not on deadline, uh, no, I don't. I'll, you know, I'll write when I, when I feel like it, um, you know, when the inspiration kind of comes, mm -hmm. but, um, now, and actually I sort of like, um, having a deadline and being on task and responsible. It's like, okay, I got to get this story done here. And so it's every day. And I feel like that, uh, I just looked at my manuscript over there. It's like, oh, um, that makes it, <laughs> <laughs> that makes it uh, flow better, I think. Hmm. And plus well, I don't yeah. forget stuff. Like I was going to say, that makes sense, because if you're spending the time to have to get back into it, my process has really changed because now I actually have time to write more frequently. But when I didn't, the number, the amount of time I'd spend having to just get back into the headspace would be half my writing session was just getting back there. So if you start there, so much more production. I totally, I, I get that. That makes a lot of sense. That's totally true. And the other thing that I do is I will forget things, little things like... Oh. 
if I have my character, oh, put on a cardigan in one scene, <laughs> then... And then put on another chat, cardigan. And then, the, and then she'll put it on again. Five cardigans. Yeah, she's got five <laughs> cardigans on now. Oh, and she's drunk the on the Chardonnay. Of <laughs> we might be. Who might be? <laughs> I know. And that's the beauty of copy editors because they will come back and they'll say, okay, here's this day. She was wearing this. Yep. And, you know, it, she doesn't need to put on a cardigan. She doesn't need to, you know, put on a coat or whatever. She's <laughs> she's set. But and not that, all that. <laughs> though, because I, I know I'm kind of that person who I do the object tracking. So I know in, in my first novel, there's a scene where two characters are talking and one of them is holding a bottle. And I'm like, where is the bottle when he's talking to her? Because he's got to put it down. If yeah. he's, he's not still holding the damn bottle. So you've got to think, stop, put down the bottle. Do they pick the bottle back up? you got to get the bottle back. You can't be leaving cardigans everywhere. you got to keep people. You know what? And readers notice that too. Oh yes. They're like, okay, he had a bottle. Where's the bottle? And yeah, it, yeah. so I always think of my readers when I'm writing because it's like, okay, I got to keep track of this now because it's, it's like a movie. Um, yes. And early on an, uh, an author friend told me, think of your scenes as a scene in a movie. Think of everything that's there. And, um, you know, act accordingly. And that was a really good piece of advice. One of the best I've received about writing. I love that. So do you cast your books as movies when you're writing them? Do you have actors in mind? Do you have Sometimes a movie? Who is your um, uh, Temperance Dare was option for film and TV. So we've been really talking about actors and actresses and it's, it's going pretty well. So, um, I don't want to say anything preliminarily, but hmm? how much say do you get? You say when you're talking about it, do you have input on it or you just have some ideas and you hope that they listen to you or no, I'm, I'm, I have, I'm, I have input. I wrote the screenplay for the, the pilot. And um, so we'll see if it, it, it's not a done deal yet. Okay. Are you okay, Jen? Mm. I was like, Oops. I just went pilot means TV series, and I just got yeah. very, very excited because I'm like, it's, you know, it's, it's a it's a strong possibility. I'll just say that right now. You know, it could all fall apart tomorrow, so I'm not announcing well, anything. But um, it was really fun to write that pilot. I had never written a screenplay before, and um, the producer asked me, "Do, do you want to write it? Can you write a screenplay?" I said, "Sure." Yeah. <laughs> Always not, say yes. Never having done it. And um, but uh it was fun. It was it's was, it was great to learn a new a new type of writing. No, oh, wow. I love that. I yeah. was gonna and say especially I, now you you could be on IMDB. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? And, you know, like I, I asked a friend of mine who was a screenwriter, uh still is for TV. And he's also an author, too, of novels. And I said to him, listen, I've got to write this screenplay. It, I'm really intimidated, and I, I'm not sure if I can do it. And he said, oh, Wendy, for God's sake, it's dialogue. You write great dialogue. And that just gave me the confidence to, to go do it. And it was fun. It was, it was really fun. Well, so it's I funny. I get to do a lot more of it. Well, and it's funny that you had said that um, with, with doing the screenplay, and then before you'd said you see it as a scene, because that's how I write. And a lot of times my first draft, uh, it's not so much word vomit as it is a screenplay because it's just dialogue. And then I've got to go back and make people do things and think things and can't just be full dialogue for three pages. That isn't going to fly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. I was, uh, I was asked as far as, so for casting, do you have much say when you do your audiobooks as far as your narrators? Because I quite like the narrator who you had for The Vanishing, but I didn't know if that was your choice or someone else pulled that out of their hat. Um, I don't remember who did The Vanishing. I think it was Xe Sands. Can't pronounce her name because it's literally just Xe. Is, is that I, how you say it? Xe? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm embarrassed to say that I don't know because she and I communicate a lot now. Um, <laughs> but, um, but um, she is. She is the master. When I heard her read my work, I fell down. I was scared by the vanishing audio. 
I was, you know, I, I listen to my own books when I'm in the car. If I'm like on a book tour and I'm driving from Minnesota to Michigan, I'll listen to my audio book. And my son thinks I'm such a dork. He's like, what? I, you have such a big ego. Mom, it's your You're listening to you. And it's like, no, I love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> but hearing somebody but, else do it is a different thing than just reading it yourself. That's it is. And she's with me uh, in the vanishing. I was thinking, oh my God. Don't go into the library. What are you going to do? And then it's like, well, okay, I know she goes into the library. So I was just hoping she didn't. And, and so I've requested her for every book since. And she's reading. Oh, wow. I, I only want her from now on. She's she's awesome. She she did a great job. But I love the idea of you yelling at your own character that you already read. You already wrote. And someone else. I wrote the thing. It, and you're still yelling. Don't do it. I know. But that is a testament to how good she is. Yeah. Pull you in. <laughs> Incredible. Um, I hate to say this, we're out of time. Oh no. Well, this is really fun. Uh, Wendy, we uh, obviously loved you, and <laughs> we would love to have you back in the future. Uh, I'm you know, available. I, I'll be sitting here yeah. all the time. <laughs> I, I don't Wait, go anywhere. I'm going? right here. <laughs> Eventually, someday there will be there will be tours of your house, and they'll point at your your oh. computer monitor and say, "This is where she wrote she all of her garden. books." Uh. And this is her carpet, and there will be somebody crying and a tour group skittering away. Uh. <laughs> oh, that is the nicest thing anybody has ever said to me. Thank <laughs> you. On the tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, let me just do give a you a glass of Chardonnay. Wait, let me know. just do a little shameless self promotion. Do it. Here's the new book, babies. So that's the one. Please like it. Please order it. The Haunting of Bryn Wilder. Is that what that Bryn says? Bryn Wilder. Hold it again. I want to see Haunt. the cover. Hold it up yep. again. It's a good cover. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't it a good cover? I it's like it. Yes. The cover Great makes cover. it. The cover makes um, the book. It does. <laughs> it does. Uh, um, so thank you, Wendy Webb. Thank well, you, thank everybody. You so much. Watching. Thank you to my Vox Vomitus Vixens for being here. Please stay tuned next week. We are being we are interviewing James Rollins. And oh, wow. <laughs> I'm a little bit freaked out in a good way, but I'm <laughs> well, afraid of, big, big. I'm afraid I'm I'm afraid I'm just going to keep asking him about his dog. <laughs> That's like my big fear is he's going to be talking about his book and I'm going to be like, so let me, let me ask you about your puppy. <laughs> oh, um, Alisa, so yes. Come on. Next, so, thanks, for a good yeah. thanks for sharing, Wendy. Best of luck with the haunting of Bryn Wilder. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Alisa. Yay. Thank you, Alisa. Thank you. Um, so again, thank you everybody. This has been Vox Vomitus. We are a copywritten podcast on the Global Authors on the Air Network. I wanna thank our producer, Roman Sorotin, our executive producer, Pam Stack, and everybody at the Global Authors on the Air Network. Thank you for your support. Thank you viewers. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Vixens. Love you all. Thank Bye. you guys. Bye-bye.